You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for uncopable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. A challenging welcome, everyone. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, as well as expanded presences this year on iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. And that's great because we can find one another more easily than ever before. What never shifts is that this is the place where you also get grounded and unique solutions that combine the practical and emotional aspects of how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon in a fashion that is unlike the typical content out there. Here's your first bold statement. Are you ready? Especially if you are an employer, prepare to be challenged today. Here's my first question. When is the workplace going to wake up and smell the coffee of a brewing talent revolution? I am certain that one query alone is music to my guest's ears, given that the preface of her latest book ends with, we call for champions of the talent revolution, prepare to lead. As my dad used to say, I am ready for bear today. I'm not entirely sure what that phrase meant to him, but I know it means to me that I am virtually rubbing my hands with glee as we invite on an expert in helping both employees and employers to embrace the future of work with solutions and strategies that supercharge workforces and capitalize on today's trends. Now, to remind us all of how this ties in with caregiving, believe me, the link is very direct. For our Canadian friends, to quote from a document published by the Vanier Institute called A Snapshot of Family Caregiving and Work in Canada, here are some highlights. 28% of Canadians, that would be 8.1 million, report having provided care to a family member or friend with a long-term health condition, disability, or aging need in the past year. And three quarters of family caregivers, so that makes us at 6.1 million, were employed at the time, accounting for 35% of all employed Canadians. 44% of employed caregivers report having missed an average of eight to nine days of work in the past 12 months because of their care responsibilities. And this has uh, found amongst employers across Canada that they have lost an estimated 5.5 billion annually in lost productivity due to caregiving related absenteeism. Now, this report goes on to talk about how reconciling care and work requires understanding respect and recognition from employers that sometimes an employee's family circumstances need focused attention. And this research shows that family caregivers and their employers benefit from policies that are inclusive, flexible, and responsive. And when employees have a clear understanding of the process for handling individual requests for accommodation and customizing work arrangements, because it finishes by saying that for nearly all Canadians, caregiving is inevitable. And I agree, at some point over the course of their lives, care is not always predictable. 
that's for sure, and does not always arise outside of working hours. That's why open communication and creative approaches to harmonizing work and care in a flexible manner benefits employees, employers, the economy, and society. That was just a snapshot from the Canadian view. And then for our American friends from the AARP Public Policy Institute, a document called Understanding the Impact of Family Caregiving on Work, we have some of these stats. 42% of U.S. workers have provided care for an aging relative or friend in the past five years. About half, or 49%, of the workforce expects to be providing elder care in the coming five years. And that is growing because in 2011, 17% of workers in the United States provided elder care up from 13% in 1999. And again, like the Canadian report, research has found that working caregivers of aging relatives report having less access to flexible work options to carry out their duties and caregiving responsibilities, and they perceive significantly lower job security than workers with childcare needs. In fact, family caregivers, those who are aged 50 and older, who leave the workforce to care for a parent, lose on average nearly $304,000 in wages and benefits over their lifetime. In fact, these estimates range from 283000 or so for men to 324000 or so for women. So I just think that you can see from those stats alone and two documents that are from potent sources, that this is a large issue. Never mind now the fact that my guest and her co-author expose work-life longevity as the most influential driver transforming today's workplace. As they write, it's a competitive edge for organizations smart enough to capitalize on it. Emphasis. Because, hello, just who do you think has one of the longer track records in organizations? That's right, the baby boomer. And who do you think is most affected by caregiving aging parents or relatives or friends, neighbors, even their own adult children who yet live at home along with babysitting grandchildren? That's right. Baby boomers are front and center in that crew. So can you now start to see why I'm so excited to have her on? Because folks, when one is a pioneer visionary, I will let you in on a little secret. It can be feeling very lonely sometimes to be an early adopter of that which is patently obvious to you, yet seems so confounding to those who take eons to climb on board. Interestingly, my guest and I first met much closer to the publication of my own co-authored book that was called The A to Z Guide to Soul Inspiring Leadership. That was circa 2003. And at the time, James and I were emphasizing the business should be really read monetary case studies for why leaders needed to treat their people right if they were to attract, retain, and engage multiple generations on their payrolls. Yet, at the time, we were often greeted as if we had two heads on our shoulders. Sixteen years later, what themes do you think I see out there with regularity on LinkedIn and in the news and other spheres? Yep, ahead of the curve. No matter what, I am forever grateful to Lisa for inviting me to be part of an event that she was hosting during that period, and that's why it's so lovely to have her join us in the midst of a very busy travel and interview schedule related to the launch of her latest book. I invite all of us to remember that we do accept call-ins here at 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. And uh, when we come back, uh, I know you are going to recognize Lisa as the trailblazer I know her to be. I, we take our pause by saying, I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network 
TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C., Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. And I ask you as we go into this next segment, have you or someone you know ever been on the receiving end of insidious or outright ageism in the workplace, including the myths that so-called older workers defined, if you can imagine, as age 65 due to archaic, I call them dinosaur models, cost more or are less productive than younger employees? I wouldn't personally be surprised because 30,000 people are turning 60 plus each day globally for at least the next 10 years. And so great news is in store for you here because that's about to change if my guest and I have anything to do with it. And so I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Taylor. And Lisa is the president of Challenge Factory, where she offers a dynamic perspective on the future of work and how demographics, the freelance economy and new market dynamics present opportunities to gain strategic advantage. She's the author of Retain and Gain, Career Management for Small Business and Retain and Gain, Career Management for Nonprofits and Charities. Those were two sector-specific playbooks chock full of low-cost and no-cost activities for managers. She has amongst her credentials being a Canadian Special Operations Forces Regiment Association board member and a member of the Dean's Advisory Council for the G. Raymond Chang School of Continuing Education at Ryerson University in Toronto. Lisa further sits on the board of directors for the Canadian Education and Research Institute for Counseling and co-chairs the Marketing Committee. She's a member of Team Canada for the 2019 International Centre for Career Development and Public Policy Symposium in Norway. Lisa Taylor is a sought-after expert, speaker, and columnist, and she has many widely recognized presences in places like the Wall Street Journal and other major outlets. So, Lisa, welcome to the Conscious Caregiver Show, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Oh, it's my great pleasure, Carol Ann. Thanks for having me. Beauty. We've got lots to cover off for people today, so let's hop into it. And I'd love to have you start by telling us a little something about how you came to be doing the work in the world that you now are. Sure. So I, uh, in the mid-2000s, around 2005, 2006, I was a a senior manager, a country-level manager for a global technology company. 
and I had uh, about 130 staff. The average age of my team was uh, 48, and the average tenure with the company was about 18 years. And even the fact that I know those stats tell you that companies were tracking what's the average age on teams and how long have people been there. So that's a, a really interesting looking back, a really interesting metric of, of why would that be so important? So that was the team that I was managing and we would hit the performance management cycle or the career management cycle and I would, as the senior leader within the division, go to initiate the conversations that we had been trained to have. And I started to notice that the conversation that I was trained to have as a manager using really fantastic tools that had been developed over time um, within the company with significant and authentic commitment to the employee development and, and the uh, careers of our staff, even with that commitment and even with those tools, I would get into conversations and I would find those staff members that were in their late 40s or early 50s, didn't want to have the kinds of conversations that I had been set up to have. They were um, feeling a little bit like they were successful, but not overly satisfied. They were languishing a little bit where they were, didn't know where they wanted to move next, and felt that there was a whole bunch of external pressure. They needed to pay off their mortgage. They needed their kids to graduate from university. There were all these milestones that were five years, eight years, 10 years down the road, and they would say, you know, when those things happen, then I can think about what I want to do next in my career. So as a relatively young manager, I found that interesting that they were just stalling and willing to kind of tread water, if you will, with their career for five, eight, even 10 years. And I became concerned for two reasons. The first is, if that's the way that my staff, who were fantastic, they did great work every day and we had a great team, but if they were coming to work every day feeling like their careers were stalled or they were just waiting for a decade, what does that actually do to our productivity and culture? I was curious about that. And the second thing that really concerned me and I was curious about is why, do pe why did people feel like they had to wait? What were they actually waiting for? Because when I asked them, when I said to them, Let's pretend that today's the day that your mortgage is paid off or your last child has graduated from post-secondary education. Let's pretend that that external constraint is no longer. What would you want to do? Nobody had any answers and they weren't even sure how to start to explore. And my tools were not designed to help someone who was later in the career cycle really explore what might be possible beyond continuing in kind of the same stream of work that they've been doing, which they've been doing already for more than a decade or two. So this whole trend of people waiting and languishing, of feeling like it's too late while still being young, uh, really struck me. And I reached out around uh, the world. I started to do some research digging into what's happening with demographics. Is there something unique about the phase of life that begins, you know, around late 40s, early 50s that would have a different need in regards to career and work? And what I found was astonishing. So there is an enormous body of work that is now 15 years later, very common to say that there's a brand new stage of life that has emerged that is past midlife and before we become aged or seniors or in the last stage of life. There's a new segment of life and that segment of life needs its own treatment for what do we want from our work? What do we need from our work? What are we skilled at? What would we like to learn? There's enough years in that new segment that we can learn something new and transition into something new. We don't have to continue doing what we've been doing if it used to be t for 20 years, now for 30 or 35 years. So that became very exciting to me. And that's very really good, Lisa. where I, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. No, I just was going to say, this is very important and helpful that you were tracing with us uh, what your own background and experience was, because you've really tracked us through a period of time of what you noticed through your in the trenches experience, as I often like to call it, as well as what you are noticing today. And that's why it's so cool 
that that were together uh, at this stage, you know, speaking in 2019 and you sharing your expertise about what has shifted across the years. I am very excited about these next stages that are seemingly being increasingly recognized and therefore hoping that those are going to make a profound difference. So let's just pause there. And you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. How terrific is it to have you with us today? I say it's great. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're chatting today with speaker, author, columnist, and trailblazer Lisa Taylor on an overall theme that we're calling The Caregiver's World of Work. And it's really founded on her latest wonderful book called The Talent Revolution, Longevity and the Future of Work. A reminder that we do welcome call-ins here at 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. And just before the pause, Lisa was sharing with us her own experiences and observations across a number of years now in the workplace and discoveries founded in research, solid at that, about new emerging models of how we treat in organizations the so-called older worker and there's a new emerging phase for those in their 40 late 40s into their 50s and so Lisa I want to ask you along the way of you know bringing forward this new information I'll bet you anything that you have found already some challenges maybe from the status quo, I don't know what to call it but where it's not just it's sort of seen as an act of kindness to leverage the talents of a mature cohort and what people forget is it's that's the smart business thing to do so what have you found challenging along the way I think this idea of the new stage of life is challenging for everybody. So just for a little bit of positioning, when the retirement age was set at 65, it was the 1930s. Life expectancy was 62. We now have a life expectancy that's in our early 80s. And yet all of the supporting mechanisms, the way our companies are structured, the way um, statistics are gathered in our countries, all still define working life as ending at 65. So 65 is a a year that really is reflective of the times in the 1930s. It's not an up-to-date benchmark of our our own 
longevity, productivity, contribution. And it's why people, as they get older, as they get into their 50s, into their 60s, start to feel like they um, aren't their age. They'll say, you know, 60s, the new 40, that type of mentality. And that's that's a, a symbol of the dysfunction because you, you're allowed to be active, vibrant, productive, really engaged 60-year-old. You don't have to use language that has you regressing 20 years in order to be able to express exactly how you feel, especially at work. And yet all of the structures are designed to have you really be focused on, shouldn't you be leaving? Isn't it time to be exiting? Why are you working so hard? It's time to kick back. There's still decades of productivity ahead of you when you hit that age, and that's causing individuals as they hit that age to recognize that something needs to change. There's an abundance. There's a lot of resources that are available for individuals that are in their 50s and 60s that are looking to reinvent, to do retirement differently, to not retire, to unretire. These are all themes that there are now. In the early days, there weren't any resources, but now there are quite a lot of resources that are there to help the individuals. What's missing in this picture, though, and the real challenge that I've found is there are no tools or very few resources for organizations. And revamping career strategies, revamping talent strategies, training plans, the expectation of how long is the employee life cycle, how long will people be within the organization, shifting that thinking needs just as much attention as helping individuals realize that they can reinvent themselves. And so what's happened is we've created a condition where we have lots of individuals that have caught the spark and have started to reinvent later in life, but they're being stranded. It's basically like having an entire cohort that's all dressed up with nowhere to go because the companies haven't adjusted in order to know that there's this workforce that's there that they should be capitalizing on. They don't know how to do it. And that's the reason why we wrote the book and why we wrote the book specifically from the employer perspective as opposed to the employee perspective. That employer perspective and how do we transform our institutions is critical if we're actually going to get to full working life productivity across all of the ages. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're really singing from a song sheet that I subscribe to enormously. And so let's build right with what you were saying there, Lisa, because it is a way of thinking as much as anything else. So I know you're you're full up with strategies that you can re- recommend to various types of leaders and companies, but what mindsets and attitudes have you then found to be helpful to encourage leaders to adjust to these new career realities? Let's talk about that for a few moments uh, until we're due for our next pause. So let's start there, Lisa. Sure. So, I mean, I think one of the things that's really important to recognize is that this is personal. Every single one of us is aging. We tend to use the word aging as if it's only for people that are older, but in fact, everyone is aging and we live in a society that values youth. Uh, We'll hear comments about getting older from people right from their 20s, right from their teens. So this idea of aging and aging in a way that is healthy with an identity that's intact and recognizing the value of aging isn't something that comes naturally to us. It doesn't come naturally to leaders, even though they are also in the workforce and aging and concerned about their own careers. So the mindset is an interesting one because while they may have conversations around what they think is appropriate for their workforce, when you get them into a closed room, when I sit with the senior executive teams, everyone has the same concerns. What's next for me? How am I going to transition? What comes after CEO or executive vice president? How do I move myself into something else? I don't want to continue doing this exact same role. So I think what's really important is just to recognize that This mindset shift isn't just corporate mindset, although that's very important, it's personal. And we need to help people to recognize the truth about longevity, the truth about the opportunity extra decades of life has provided, so people stop feeling like they're running out of time. People Mm -hmm. are not running out of time. The time that we think we have is much longer than we actually... um, the time that we think that we have is actually uh, stunted. It's, it's, you know, stuck in the, the 1930s with that 65-year-old milestone that we've been marching towards our entire careers. 
that's not a good finish line. And really the concept of what should the finish line be is also the wrong question. It's what do I have to contribute and what do I want to do next? And be a viable, uh, really, member on both an organizational and a personal level in that process. Because after all, it's people that come to work with companies. And so you make a really great point that I love there. So when we when we come back, Lisa, we'll talk a little bit about uh, strategies that you can also recommend to people. So just let's hang tight. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, It's like a a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Thank you to all for the privilege of being part of your day. We never take you for granted here. And you are, of course, with your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. And we're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, as well as iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. And today we are thrilled to connect with speaker, author, columnist and trailblazer, Lisa Taylor, about the talent revolution, longevity, and the future of work. The call-in number is 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. And just before our last pause, Lisa was sharing with us what I always think of as the foundation about attitudes and mindsets that are really called for, especially from those in a leadership role, and how vital it is to reconsider new approaches to career ownership, how companies can really empower so-called older workers to create or find appealing new roles, maybe within the organization and without triggering constructive dismissal claims. Because I loved the, the segment which talked about that in her latest book. Lisa, you don't you may or may not know we did a show back in the fall about this slice of caregiving and the topic of work. And I was citing a case where in Toronto an employee who was in the age group that we're speaking about today was essentially a caregiver to an aging mother, but he wound up being terminated because his employer did not feel comfortable, even though he was very productive, fulfilling his work at home arrangement. And it was because of lack of face time. So I'm pretty sure you're going to next share with us some strategies. I know you speak a lot about action plans for CEOs, human resources and frontline managers throughout with, with Fern. So What can you tell us that you have found effective there in both your research and your practical experience? 
Sure. So I'll just share uh, three strategies that um, employers should be considering when they take a look at how do they update their structure so that they can meet the individuals that are ready to be in the workforce and uh, and really capitalize on the talent that's available for the benefit, actually, of of all of the generations, and I'm going to keep reinforcing that, that this isn't a, a one generation only, that if we employ older workers longer, it's going to be good for older workers. The research actually shows that the longer and the more uh, employment, meaningful employment older workers have in, um, in workplaces, the lower youth unemployment goes. So having properly employed older workers actually is a strategy to decrease youth unemployment. And so across the board, there's good reason to adopt these strategies. So the first one is to adopt a, a new approach to career that in, implements legacy career paths. It recognizes that there may be foundational or early career roles within an organization. People then move into their mid-careers. And then when they get to their late 40s, early 50s, into their 60s, 70s, and beyond, they move into their legacy career period. And that period of time allows them to reconsider, what do I need? What do I want? Am I balancing caregiving needs and hours that I need to have at home? Do I still like the career path I chose when I was 19 and went into post-secondary education or 22 and got my first job? How do I want to make the transition for the decades that exist in my 50s, 60s, and into my 70s? So having legacy career paths allow employers to answer the question of where do I go next? so that people don't stall in the organization and then become disengaged because they're stalled and they're not growing, they're not learning anything new, and they're feeling like they're sidelined while everyone else has different opportunities laying out in front of them. So that's one strategy that I'd recommend. The second strategy that I recommend is that employers consider that nobody stays with organizations their entire careers and a really large number of their employees are going to be exiting the organization over the next two decades through retirement. When they do eventually get to an age that they decide they don't want to be working anymore, and yet they still want to be engaged in society, they have lots to contribute, they have lots of ways to be meaningful members of the community. So organizations are encouraged to think about how can we create an alumni network? We're staying connected to the brand, staying connected to the company, to the teams, to the organization that they've been a part of for decades still has meaning and they can still contribute in and help the organization when there's something that they need. If you need, for example, to ramp up the number of people being recommended in as new recruits to the organization. Recruitment these days is very painful. What if all of the alumni that have left your organization in the last five years knew that they should be looking for great talent to bring back to you and were really motivated and engaged to recommend friends, family, people that they find. How much easier would that make your recruitment task? So that's alumni programs. And then the last strategy that I'll recommend is that we shift the thinking from knowledge transfer. I have knowledge. You need it. I'm going to give it to you and then I'm not useful anymore because you have my knowledge to a way that the health sector has started to look at knowledge. And that is from knowledge transfer, we move to knowledge translation. I have knowledge, you have knowledge, the environment around us is informing what we need to know. Let's pull all of the information that we have together and work together to translate it so that it's useful in the future as our environment continues to evolve. It honors that there is value in all of those components coming together and the translation process means that it's an ongoing process. We can always come back and look to see, can we make that translation better? The environment has shifted. What else do we want to be considering? It's a more respectful and to be honest, more profitable way to look at moving knowledge because not every piece of knowledge that I have needs to get into the head of a new employee. The trick is to know how do we work together to maximize the intergenerational relationship that we have and the knowledge that we all share. So there's three quick strategies that employers should start to implement if they're going to update their career and talent structures to be able to really capitalize on the workforce that already exists today.
Well, those are terrific, Lisa. And honestly, uh, neither of us completely knew as we were getting ready for today behind the scenes, everything that we would be sharing back and forth. And one of the things I love in having on such a guest expert like yourself is I learn something new, right? Never had thought about knowledge transfer as opposed to just, you know, kind of uh, um doing it the simplistic old way, shall we say. So on that note, we're still going to have Lisa with us for another pause, but we take a break for the Conscious Caregiver Show. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and we are on the BBM Global Network as well as iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. So stand by, everyone. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals listen to john hawkins my strategy saturdays 1 p.m eastern on the bbm global network and tune in radio are you looking for employment and live in los angeles orange riverside and san bernardino counties jobs annex is the place for you are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in los angeles orange riverside and san bernardino counties jobs annex is for you employers jobs is your resource for career-minded people jobs is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. Jobsannex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. As always, we thank you for choosing to be a highly valued member of our audience, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, along with Apple iTunes, and we're chatting today with Lisa Taylor, author of a newly released book, amongst others that she has penned, and it is called The Talent Revolution, Longevity and the Future of of work. And as we come to our last few moments together with her today, I earnestly hope, as undoubtedly she does, that as especially an organizational leader, you are starting to ask yourself a pivotal question such as whether you can afford to have your competitors get ahead of you because you're not capitalizing on the talent pools that exist within your organization. At Lisa has been chock-a-block already of mindsets, as well as three powerful strategies that she just shared with us before the break. Knowing how much experience and expertise that you bring to the table, Lisa, what else that you would want to impart today have we perhaps not touched on? so far, like messages you want to also leave us with. Thanks for uh, for that opportunity, Carol Ann. I think it's really important. The future of work gets discussed a lot um, these days, and certainly it's core to the work that we do at Challenge Factory. Much of the discussion when we talk about the future of work gets us really deep into technologies really quickly. So we'll hear about artificial intelligence or machine learning or automation or uh, Bitcoin and blockchain. All different types of technologies seem to be what dominates the conversation under the headline of the future of work. And one of the things that we have found to be so important is to recognize that the future of work is actually human. 
if we want to talk about the future of technology, we can talk about the future of technology. And I had a 12-year technology career, so I'm very happy to do that. But if we want to talk about the future of work, and especially as it relates to our own careers, then we have to recognize that that future of work is human. And we may use technology tools in order to do the work, but the really hard thinking that has to happen right now is what is the human side of the future of work. And we've identified five drivers that are shaping the future of work. Only one of them is technology related. The others are all related to how individuals work, um, work groups and the workforce is shifting and changing and will continue to shift and change well past 2030. The single greatest disruptive factor in workplaces today is demographic change. The number of people that are aging out of the career and talent structures that are coasting as a kindness because managers don't know how to engage older workers and the cascading effect that that has on culture across the entire organization, affecting productivity and all other financial measures, that impact is actually more significant today than the effect of AI. And yet it doesn't get the discussion. It doesn't get the topic, um, the, the topical discussions or the, you know, the sexiness that technology always seems to have. And so I think what, you know, the parting message that I have is for people to recognize that the aging workforce is brand new to this generation. It's the first time in human history that we are living as long as we are and wanting to stay engaged and productive. It's a, a generation that is forging the path, that is creating new talent structures and new ways of thinking about work. That's cascading through the generations, and we're seeing people take greater career ownership, taking more liberties with their career, being more entrepreneurial and focused on how they can bring what they need to the workplace, as opposed to just waiting for workplaces to tell them what they should be doing. All of that starts because of this demographic shift. And so boomers should feel like they are talent revolutionaries as they continue through their work. Uh, they should recognize that if it feels uncomfortable or if it feels like there's a battle, it's because change is hard and they're on the leading edge of it. And they shouldn't do it alone. They should look for where there are other individuals, organizations. There are lots of places that are starting to recognize it's good business to revamp the career life cycle and to think about it in terms of our entire working life, not our 1930s working life. Seek out those organizations, those places, so that you're not fighting this enormous generational shift all by yourself but you are still a trailblazer and a revolutionary at the edge, at the leading edge of the talent revolution. So that's really the message that I think is most important to leave with you and with your listeners and really with anyone that um, is looking at the world of work, especially in those conversations, those future of work conversations that become so tech centric when really the this biggest um, advantage to be taken is by maximizing the potential of the workforce that we currently have. Mm -hmm. The human element, Lisa. Boy, what an inspiring call to action that you give us. You're right. That doesn't get the sexy treatment as it should. And isn't it great everyone who's with us today or who will be listening to the recording after the fact that there are advocates for you? out in the workplace, such as Lisa Taylor, which dovetails right into the question. Now, how can folks find out more about you, Lisa? Sure. So uh, my company, Challenge Factory, has a website. It's challengefactory.ca. The um, book is also, uh, there's information about the talent revolution, longevity, and the future of work on the company website, but also at talentrevolutionbook.com. And um, we're easily found on all social media channels. If you just take a look for either Lisa Taylor, my Twitter handle is at Change Paths or Challenge Factory. And we're part of a number of different networks in a number of different countries. So if, if you're in a geography and you're not sure where you may connect into someone locally that might actually have these same approaches or the same uh, interest in connecting with other people that are looking to reinvent what it means to have a career longer in life, 
Um, if you get in touch with us, we're always happy to make those connections around the world as well. Wow, isn't that fantastic? That I know your reach is just massive, and we've touched but the tip of the iceberg today, Lisa, with you. Yet I really say I am so grateful that you decided to be on. When I reached out to you during those dark days of Toronto's winter, I greatly appreciated your immediate response and time had elapsed since we were last together, yet you were so enthusiastic and I wish you every possible success going forward. So thank you, Lisa Taylor. And we're, of course, still together on the BBM Glow Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is The Conscious Caregiver Show. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to our last precious few moments together with each other today. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. And wasn't it fantastic to get that wealth of wisdom from Lisa Taylor, founded on her recently released book called The Talent Revolution, Longevity and the Future of Work? Uh, I personally enjoyed the read And one of the many places where she does case studies that are called observations from the field. And she she cited uh, a lady named Sue who used to be a great employee and now had checked out and was kind of hard to work with or perceived that way. And instead of waiting her out and hoping that she would quit, the leader was actually asked to consider if she was dealing with something they should be able to help with. An environment was provided where the employee could share a change in mental health status that had gone undiagnosed. And as a result, Sue was able to return to high performance status with renewed loyalty and connection to the company. Personally, had I been the consultant, I might have also been tempted to ask if she was carrying extra elder care responsibilities at home, of course, depending on the context. Either way, this world of work as it affects caregiving is so very important. And as Lisa aptly observed behind the scenes, today is a bit of an anniversary of sorts. And this is the one year anniversary since I launched the Conscious Caregiver on April 24th, 2018. Can you even imagine? And, um, you know, I just feel so strongly about the topic because caregiving profoundly impacts every sector of life. If I had have been employed during what was the most grueling chapter of my life so far, to quote one of my friend's famous phrases, I would have lost my mind. 
And as it was, the serious effects it had upon my entrepreneurship that it took years to recover from were bad enough. Now, by the time we reach next week, we'll be entering the month that contains Mother's Day. And for those with a difficult mom, the occasion is a real challenge. For those in an opposite situation, it can be a poignant time. And either way, we have guests in both realms, uh, starting with a passionate advocate for the notion that the quality of your relationships with others is a direct reflection on the relationship you have with yourself. And I could certainly not agree more. So if you always want to find out more about what I'm doing in the world, my website is copingwithuncopableparents.com, copingwithuncopableparents.com. Or you can also send me an email at carolann at carolannhamilton.com. That's C-A-R-O-L-A-N-N at carolannhamilton.com. When I'm there, I am always happy to offer you a complimentary uh, confidential readiness session to see if you might be able to benefit from my coaching services. I have several packages in that regard, and we would talk about what you most wish to change about your situation, why you would want to do that, what will happen if you don't achieve those shifts, what prevents you from achieving your preferred parental relationship, and what you've done so far in those regards because I am here to serve just as Lisa is in her particular realm in the workplace. Either way, we're both your champions and advocates. To catch any missed programs, go to my archives at boldbravemedia.com under shows, the hyphen conscious hyphen caregiver. I can be found under self-help or health, I always say with you that you have been strong too long, and I encourage you to dare to care with flair. Can't wait to bring you a whole slew of new shows that feature uh, healers and relationship experts, so stay with us, everyone. As always, we're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is The Conscious Caregiver Show. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.